Hello Chemistry 111 class. Welcome to the third video for chapter one. Uh, we, we left off talking about how to classify matter and what matter is. So the next step is to mix matter together. So if I take several different elements or maybe a couple compounds or some combination of those two things, I can combine them together and make a mixture. So a mixture has to be two or more different substances, okay? Not, not one single pure substance. So water is not a mixture because it just contains water. But if I take water and mix some salt with it, that is a mixture. Okay, so when I mix two things together, I either get a homogeneous mixture, which means that the, the sample is the same throughout. So if you take a look at the picture here, on, on our right, when I mix the yellow and blue substances together, they form the green substance, and it's green all the way throughout. So that's a homogeneous mixture. Another example of a homogeneous mixture might be something, okay, apple juice could be a homogeneous mixture, meaning that it's the same in the beginning when I start to drink it, and the end when I'm finished, it tastes the same. It's a mixture because apple juice is made out of water and sugar and dye and citric acid and all kinds of components. So it's not a single element. So it's a mixture. Or a single compound it would not be a mixture either. But this has multiple compounds kind of stuck together. On the other hand, we have a situation where we mix together compounds and we get two distinctly different layers. So in this little shot glass here, you've got a yellow layer and a blue layer. You might even have more than two distinctly different layers, okay? So if you've, if you've got different composition in this color, different col in this case, different colors in our shot glass, um, then that is called a heterogeneous mixture. So hetero means different and genius means throughout. Homo means the same and genius means throughout. So homogeneous means the same throughout and heterogeneous means different throughout. So I like to think about um, orange juice with pulp as being a great example of, of a heterogeneous mixture because the pulp collects at the bottom. So that means the bottom of the juice is different from the top. Okay, so that's a heterogeneous mixture. So we can summarize everything from the second video and sort of this last slide by making a flow chart. So everything has a state of matter. And for this class, we're only going to be looking at gases, solids, and liquids. So this is a nice summary of the properties that classifying matter more specifically. Everything is either going to be pure or a mixture. If it's pure, that means that it, it only is composed of one substance. If it's a mixture, you've got two or more separate substances. Okay, so let's, let's start classifying a few, some things. Let's look at this orange juice. Now it matters whether it has pulp or not, right? So let's assume um, we just did pulp before. We said that that, was, that fell into the heterogeneous mixture category. But if this was orange juice with no pulp, then then we would first classify it as a liquid. I know it's not a gas because when I pour it into my cup from the gallon jug, it doesn't suddenly fill up the entire room with orange juice. So it, it maintains a certain volume. Um, but I know that when I pour it into the glass, it's going to take on the shape of the glass. So that's characteristic of a liquid here. Now I know that orange juice is not a pure substance because I know it's got sugar in it and citric acid and water and a whole bunch of other components. Vitamins, calcium, all kinds of stuff goes in there. So it must we must go down the mixture pathway here. And then I have to say, okay, well if it's pulp, then it's a heterogeneous mixture, but we're talking about pulpless <laughs> orange juice. So we're gonna mark that as a homogeneous um, mixture. Okay, the next one is a golden ring. Okay, so like a wedding ring, maybe a wedding band. Okay, so a wedding band is definitely not a gas. That wouldn't stay on your finger. A liquid won't stay on your finger either. So the wedding band falls here under the category of 
uh, a solid. Now, to decide whether it's pure or not, we have to kind of think about what kind of ring we purchased. Okay, if you purchased a ring made entirely out of pure gold, it wouldn't maintain its shape as a ring for very long. It would become distorted. It would get sort of squished over time. In fact, even if you buy a 24 karat ring, which isn't pure gold, it's mixed with other things, it will distort. So a wedding ring is not going to be a pure substance because if it were, it, would, it wouldn't maintain its shape very well. So we're going to mark it here as a mixture. It's a mixture of gold, but a bunch of other metals too. Okay. Uh, when I look at my wedding ring, it's the same throughout, so that means it's homogenous. It doesn't change texture halfway through, um, as far as I can tell. So that would be homogenous. Now if I had, um, I don't know, a diamond on it or something kind of embedded in the band, then I might consider it to be heterogeneous, okay, depending on the situation. All right, we already did apple juice. All right, so then we're going to look at, we're going to look at salad dressing, and I'm thinking particularly of like Italian dressing. Um, definitely a liquid because I can pour it. Uh, I can't pour gases as easily because they sort of spread out, right? So solids don't pour the same way either. They don't have a tendency to stay together. So when I pour my salad dressing on the salad, it sort of spreads out over the top of the salad, but it doesn't fill up the entire room. So that's what makes it a liquid. I know it's not pure because if it was pure, it would be boring. It would taste maybe like just plain water or just plain oil, okay? Uh, my Italian dressing is a mixture of vinegar and oil and herbs and whatever else I put in there, salt probably, okay? When I look at the Italian dressing, it has two distinct layers, one, one on top, one on bottom, and I know that if I don't shake it up, it's going to end up tasting all vinegary, which is gross. So I know that means it's a heterogeneous mixture. The vinegar is on top and the oil is usually on the bottom. All right, the next one is copper plumbing. Okay, copper plumbing is is pure. It's 100% copper. Um, it's a solid, so we're going to mark it here. And I know it's 100% copper because it looks just like any chunk of elemental copper. Copper is an element with the symbol CU, so I'm going to mark it down here. Now, if I didn't know that, if I didn't know that copper was on the periodic table, I could look, um, but also I could test the properties of this material. I could try to melt it and see if it would melt, different parts of it melted at different times, or I could break it up into pieces. I could also test if it conducts electricity or not, which it does. Um, I could try to react it with, with some different chemicals and see what it does, all right? And so that, that would help me figure out that copper is an element, or I could just take a look at the periodic table and it's listed right on that top row. Okay, so our last one is going to be salt water. I'm going to do this one in blue. Okay, so salt water, well, if it's water, that implies that it's in the liquid phase. Okay, and salt water is probably literally just a combination of salt and water together, so that means it's definitely a mixture. And when I think about mixing salt and water together, I know the salt is going to dissolve, so it seems to kind of disappear. And so that means that it's a hom homogenous mixture. It looks the same throughout. Okay, so once I have a mixture, the next thing I want to be able to do is to separate it. There's two different sort of categories of separation. The first one is mechanical separation. That means to physically separate it. So whenever you filter your coffee in the morning, that's mechanical separation. You're keeping the solid coffee grounds inside the coffee filter and the liquid flavored with delicious coffee beverage goes through the filter paper and into your waiting cup. Okay, but that's physically separating the solid and the liquid. Um, you can also chemically separate things. That means that you're reacting it. You're using the chemical properties of the substance. Okay, so things like I can take, I can take water, which is a compound, H2O, and I, I can add electricity to it. This is a lightning bolt. 
I know it doesn't exactly look like one, but you know, pretend. Okay, so there's our lightning bolt. I can take it and I can Okay, so I can take lightning and I can electrocute it with a lightning bolt. There we go. And when I do that, what I get out of it is simpler pieces. I get the element hydrogen, which is a gas, and also the element oxygen, also a gas. These two are very flammable. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen are very flammable together, but water, of course, is not flammable, so they have very different properties when I have chemically separated them with electricity. All right, so I'm relying on the, the, the chemical property that water reacts with electricity in this way to separate it into simpler compounds, uh, simpler substances. They're not compounds, they're elements. Okay, so I started with a compound and I chemically separate it into its simpler elements. Compounds can be chemically separated, but elements cannot. Once you are at the element stage, that's as small as it goes because we said elements are different types of atoms and atoms cannot be separated any further. Okay, so in Top Hat, I want you to open the, the slide that's titled What's in Your Cereal and watch this video. This is an example of mechanical separation. So pause our lecture video here long enough to watch this. Okay, so what we just saw is they used a magnet to scrape across the bag and collect together the iron particles. By the way, it's perfectly safe to add powdered iron to food. In fact, it helps prevent anemia because people get a higher content of iron in their diet. Um, so it's actually, it's actually a good thing. Your stomach acid dissolves the iron particles with no problem and, and it, then you can absorb it. So you can use it in your metabolism. It's particularly important for carrying oxygen around in your blood. Okay, so using that magnet, scraping it across the, the bag like that is an example of a physical separation technique. Okay, and the reason for that is that it's a phase change. You're, you're taking teeny tiny little particles and collecting them together using magnetism. So that's a physical change. Other examples of phase changes are when we're going from ice, so here's our iceberg, to liquid water. So going from ice to liquid is called melting and that's another phase change. That's a physical change. And the reason I can tell that it's different from chemical change is that it's still water molecules. We still have one oxygen, two hydrogen for every one. One oxygen, two hydrogen. Okay, so it's still water even though it has a different physical state. Likewise, if I go from liquid to gas, we call that vaporization or boiling. The particles are still water particles. They're just arranged physically differently, okay? So we don't change the chemical. We're just changing how it's arranged. On the other hand, in cases where we are actually changing the chemical, we call that a chemical change. So some examples include oxidation, which we would regularly call rusting. Uh, decomposition and any kind of chemical reaction is all chemical change. So for example, if I think about a truck which has a nice beautiful smooth steel quarter panel by the wheel, over time in upstate New York that's going to rust. It's going to slowly go from being metal, which is magnetic, to being black and red powder, which is not magnetic. So the fact that the property changes from the beginning to the end means we have a different substance. In fact, iron will rust into iron oxide, which is the same thing Mars is made out of. It does not behave in the same way that it did before it rusted. So that means you have two different chemicals. Okay, so that's a chemical change. So on this one in Top Hat, I want you to, to select one picture that represents chemical change. And we're looking for chemical change. All right, we're going to pick up here in the next talk. So tune in for some more.